Every season is spooky season in our book. So settle in and prepare to be shook. You are listening to Shook, a comedic podcast about all things paranormal and unexplained. Hey friends, I'm Amanda. And I'm Santa. And this week we are doing a Shook Stories episode for you. And we actually have some Shook Stories of our very own as well, in addition to your stories that you've sent us. Piggybacking off of that, my personal fun fact Shook Story is that when I returned to Nashville from Amanda's house in Atlanta, where we went to see Two Girls, One Ghost for Halloween, I may or may not have brought something back or something. So you may or may not know about how Two Girls, One Ghost is the most haunted podcast in America. Um, the reason for that is sometimes they experience hauntings based on the subject matter that they cover. They also have had listeners report experiencing haunting-like phenomena whilst listening to their episodes or after listening to their episodes. There's all types of events that occur around Two Girls, One Ghost, and it's possible that I may have also been affected. For those of you who watch the podcast, you know that I have a whole set design in my studio. It's something that I'm just kind of building out as I go adding things to. And I'm very, very proud of my Lara's Beating Art prints that I have here behind me. The very first one is one that Amanda got me. And it is a painting of a girl in the woods with a ghost standing next to her. And I love it very much. So basically, it's usually like very, very straight on the wall. And when I came home, the print had completely shifted inside of the frame. And now it's just like entirely crooked and diagonal inside of the frame. And it just doesn't make any sense because none of my other studio decor is disrupted at all. Just the print inside of the frame. And I'm going to move so that if you're watching, you can see this. Yeah, mm -mm, no, ma'am. It does not look like that normally. It's been situated the correct way for how long now? Months? A year? Yeah, so I've had that Laura's Beating Art print in that frame for over a year now, I would say. And it has never shifted in the frame. It's actually very tight in position inside there. And it's just weird because the frame didn't get disrupted. Like nothing got disrupted except for the, the print itself inside. And I just left it that way instead of fixing it so that you guys could see it. When we are done recording, I'm going to fix it once and for all. Mm -hmm. And it better not do that again. <laughs> Was that a haunting from TGOG? Was it something else unrelated? You decide. Oh, God, Santa. Okay, if we're doing fun facts, Lord knows we have plenty but we have to talk about what happened when you were here. Yeah. All right, I'll set it up and then you finish it off because this was crazy. Okay, so first and foremost, not only was Santa in town, my cousin Andy was here crashing with us and he and Connolly came and joined us at the Two Girls, One Go show. We had a blast. Corinne and Sabrina are fantastic. And we had a great time. Everything was all and well. We come home late that night and... I think you and I were just watching horror films or something, and I remember I passed out on the couch. My cousin Andy was sleeping in the guest bedroom, and we specifically requested, hey, Andy, can you please keep that door cracked open? Because in one little nook in that room, that's where we keep the cat's litter boxes and where we feed them, and it's just like the little cat corner. And they need to be able to roam freely, of course. And so next morning, I wake up, and I'm annoyed because Andy apparently had shut the door. So in my eyes, I'm thinking, okay, does that mean the cats just peed all over the floor all night? What, what's going on? They did. <laughs> <laughs> they did, in fact, do that. Well, so <laughs> <laughs> to this day, I can't find it. And cat pee has a really bad smell, obviously. So I don't know, but I sprayed my carpet with the <laughs> enzyme eater anyway. <laughs> Oh, good. The moral of the story is when I passed out on the couch and left the stew, passed by the guest bedroom, Andy's door was wide open as requested. 
When I woke up in the morning, the door was shut. Andy, the next morning, said, I have chills. He said, which one of you said in my ear last night, you're being too loud? I was like, what? Nobody said that. What are you talking about? I passed out. I probably woke up around 2 or 3 a.m. to go back to the master bedroom with Connolly, and I have no explanation. He was sound asleep. You were sound asleep. I was sound asleep. And apparently this all happened, I guess the door got shut, I guess sometime after two. But who was talking to Andy? (laughs) Who was talking to Andy? And what was he doing that was so loud? I don't understand. Speaking of loud, Bowie won't stop barking. Surprise, surprise. Surprise, surprise. Surprise, surprise. I saw somebody on TikTok who dressed as that woman for Halloween, and I was like, this is the most epic thing I've ever seen. But yeah. Okay. So Santa, you have to kick it off from there. What happened to you? So all that stuff happened in Andy's room actually on the first night. Was that the first night? It was. Yeah. Okay. And that was the first night. But also during that first night, whilst the guest room door containing the litter box was closed. One of the cats came and laid down with me on the couch and I was sleeping on this chaise kind of area of the couch in this corner. And so the cat at one point gets startled by something in the corner behind me and just kind of stares in that corner for a minute and then quickly whips his head towards the door leading out of the stew as if he heard something and his ears were up and he just like sat up and stared at the door for like a while. I was like, come here, kitty, lay down. It's okay. And he was like, "Mm -mm, I'm, I'm watching. I'm keeping watch. (laughs) So that was scary. And what if that was the moment that Andy heard the whisperings and then the door closing? What if all of that actually happened at the same time and Bender was reacting to it from the stew where I had the door closed in the stew? Because we couldn't see anything that was going on in the hallway because the stew door was closed. So it's possible that all of that could have happened at the same time. And then the next night after the TGOG show, we came home and then Amanda and I went into the stew to eat a bunch of Halloween candy Mm -hmm. and watch our favorite horror movie, The Strangers. Mm -hmm. And that was great. But of course, I fell asleep during that. And then she, of course, migrated back to the master bedroom. And then at some point, the movie ends and the TV goes back to like the Hulu homepage. After the movie is over. I specifically remember waking up in the night and the TV was on the Hulu homepage. I wanted to turn the TV off, but I couldn't find the remote. And then all of a sudden, the movie The Strangers starts just playing again. (laughs) It just starts playing again. And it was at a loud enough volume that I was like, oh my God, no. And I was scared. And so since I couldn't find the remote, I just like got up and like frantically searched for the off button on the Mm -hmm. TV. Couldn't find the off button on the TV. So I had to unplug the TV (laughs) to get that to stop. It was so scary. Oh my gosh. (laughs) To me, home invasion movies are the scariest form of horror, hands down. I just can't. And those masks, it's the scariest. But okay, so I stand corrected. That first event that we that we discussed with the door being shut, Andy swearing he didn't shut it, that was night one because Santa came to town a day early. I got blessed mm-hmm. by her presence a little bit early. And the next day was when the stranger stuff happened. I, I can't explain why the TV would have done that. And is, is the strangers even on Hulu? I thought it was on Netflix because if mm-hmm. it's on Netflix, but then it queued up hulu that's even trippier than if it was on hulu i don't know i thought it was on hulu but i don't know because i was zooted when we started watching the strangers so yeah well (laughs) who can ever be sure we're just going to pretend that bender or fry or somebody stepped on the remote or something but i distinctly remember you were 
passed out when I left that night. And I left the remote in a spot that was not near one of the crevices where the remote could find. I was very intentional about making sure it, would, it wouldn't be in a place where it could fall through the cushions. But the next day, I had to look high and low for that remote. It went missing. Did you find it? I did. And I don't remember exactly where it was. I think it was underneath the coffee table. Oh. I don't know, but long story short, we both got a little bit shook this weekend, and it could be uh, TGOG haunting us. It could be, <laughs> oh God, Santa, it could be something else entirely. Something happened to me two nights ago. Oh my God. You don't know about this yet. Oh my God, I'm going to cry. <clears throat> I was, first and foremost, I don't drink. In fact, it'll be two years in a couple of weeks since I last had a drop of alcohol. It just wasn't for me. And I don't think I had popped a Delta 8 at that point to go to sleep. Connolly went off to do his own thing. I said, babe, I have to rest. I am completely beat. So what I'm about to tell you happened, I'm hoping is because I had some sort of micro nap where I just nodded off and had an auditory hallucination like that exploding head syndrome. But I swear to Pete, from down the hallway, I heard Connolly come home. I heard him walk up the stairs, and I heard his keys, and I heard him say, Ah, all right. I muted the TV. I said, oh, hey, babe. Didn't hear a thing. I checked his location. He's still at the bar. I don't know. I think I might have some sort of mimic in my house or something. I don't know. No. It really scared me. It really scared me. And I... Honestly, I think it might just be me because, like, something's following me because I think, I don't know if I told you this before on the podcast, but there was a time where I think I got back from doing something spooky ooky and I came home, Connolly was upstairs, and I said, hey, babe, and I heard him say, oh, hey. I walked upstairs, and he had his noise-canceling headphones on, and he didn't even know I was home. Oh, no. Oh. Am I just hearing stuff all the time? Maybe I need to go to the doctor. I'm hoping it's not a medical thing, but I also hope that my house isn't haunted because that would be scary. But, yeah, scary things are happening up in here ever since you left. I assume that you don't want to talk about the thing that happened in your house, right? At least maybe not yet. I don't know if I want to talk about that yet, but I probably will. That's what I was thinking. I was like, you should at some point probably touch on that if you keep having these situations because that's something that could be correlated. Yeah, so basically, basically very scary things are happening in my house at all times. And I'll have to tell you guys more about that later, but probably on Patreon just because it's really personal and yeah. Um, but on that note... I do want to say hello to our brand new Patreon subscriber, Haley. Haley. Yes. Welcome. But yeah, um, there's so much more we could talk about and I might pepper in some other things as we go if it flows organically. But Santa, I think you go first for the Shook Stories this week. What you got for me? So legend has it, I got a story from Lynn who... <gasps> has submitted a story in the past and we had asked them to please send us more. And so Lynn delivered. <laughs> this says, okay, so this had me shook. Hey, Amanda and Santa, you wanted more. So Lynn is back. I'm currently trying to catch up on your episodes, but I figured I'd give you some more content in the meantime. Y'all wanted to hear about Mabel, my friendly ghost. So here we go. Backstory and all. Yes. My husband and I were house hunting 2021 to 2022. Finally, in March 2022, my husband sent me a realtor.com link to a house, our current home, in a neighboring small town. Immediately, I responded to my husband saying, yeah, that one's haunted for sure. But nonetheless, we scheduled a walkthrough. And during that walkthrough, I felt a certain energy, but I didn't feel in danger in any way. 
Once we moved in around early May, though, weird things started happening. I'd hear footsteps coming up our basement stairs almost every night my husband worked. He works 12s, so he goes to work from 5 p.m. to 5 a.m. The footsteps would come halfway up the stairs, stop, and then go back down. I could hear these so clearly because our master bedroom is literally right next to the basement stairs. I didn't have the heebie-jeebies about this basement like I did slash do my old house. In fact, I actually thought it was super cool and huge. We have five separate rooms in our basement. It's crazy. (laughs) Hell yeah, space for activities. Yeah. Anyway, things started to get moved, not hidden, just moved slightly away from where we last put them. Some people might miss this as it was so small, but my husband and I both have photographic memories, so we noticed. Our Wi-Fi would be working good, and then all of a sudden our shows would buffer, even though the internet was stable, and it wouldn't stop buffering until you recognized out loud that it was. Then suddenly our show would turn back on, every time. Uh -uh. (laughs) Uh-uh. Somebody wanted attention. All of this prompted me to do a little digging on the house. I started looking over the records that the realtor provided for us, now a month ago when we purchased the home. Our home is a historic home built in 1917. I mean, the town church was torn down to build our house, so it was rebuilt a block away, so don't worry. So a copy of the house records were given to each owner, and previous owners were added with every sale, obviously. I knew the unwedded couple who bought the home in the 90s only lived in the house for two months before they completely ditched and the house was bought from them by the sweet, widowed, elderly lady that we bought from, who was switching to a nursing home. She was widowed before moving in, so I knew by process of elimination, I'd have to start in 1917 and work my way to the 90s. I started with the death records of the OG homeowners. They both died off of the premises. I get that some spirits can come home even if they didn't die there, but I don't think that's the case here. But I did see that they had a daughter who inherited the house, never was married, never had children, and died in the home. A daughter named Mabel. Oh my gosh. Doing even more digging on the house itself, I found that it had only ever been legally owned by a woman. Mabel's mother was on the deed in 1917. Mabel around the 1950s, 60s, the woman of the couple in the early 90s, and the elderly woman until 2022. Hmm. My husband is the first man to have his name on all of the legal paperwork for the house. In my feminist mind, I thought, if Mabel is the one lingering, maybe she doesn't like men. Maybe that's why the couple moved so quickly, even though his name wasn't on any paperwork. He still lived there. Once I discovered this, I quickly gathered my thoughts, went out to my living room, and spoke my intentions clearly and as stern as I could. I did, however, mention that if they lived here before and planned on respecting my family, we would respect them and they could stay. Ever since then, the footsteps stopped completely. Things stopped moving, but every now and then, a TikTok won't load or our shows buffer, and I just say, Hey, Mabel, I'm glad you're here, but could I please watch my show? And it'll work immediately. Sometimes I can even feel her energy next to me on the couch when I turn on my favorite old musicals. Think Meet Me in St. Louis, My Fair Lady, Oklahoma, etc. I like to think she was lonely and just needed a friend to recognize that she was there. And that friend was me. Couple fun facts about the house that might have also played into Mabel being so protective. Like I mentioned before, the basement has five rooms. One of those rooms is actually a garage. A sunken, curved driveway outside leads right out to the street, and the garage could fit a small two- or four-door car. Come to find out, Mabel's parents actually sold bootleg liquor out of that part of the basement in the 20s during Prohibition. Ooh, naughty. That's really fucking cool. Along the basement comes its steps, and as you walk up them, the top two step walls have one hole in each of them. Turns out they're original hidden cubbies from the build to help Mabel's parents hide their illegal alcohol. These could be reasons why she was so protective, why there were footsteps on the basement at night, etc., 
but until I pull a spirit box out, I'll never truly know. Thanks so much for reading my other entries on here, and I can't wait to hear your thoughts on this one. Once again, you guys are the light during my photo editing sessions, and I love you so. As the great Kris Jenner once said, you're doing amazing, sweetie. I love that. Thank you so much for giving the people what they want, and the people being me and Amanda begging for more information about Mabel. And I'm really glad that she is sweet and respects you and just like listens. And I do request that you try out the spirit box. Please. Although I understand if you don't want to do the spirit box because I would probably not do that in my own home either because I would get too scared. But if Mabel's nice, it could be very interesting to hear what she has to say. And the historic home of it all mm -hmm. and the prohibition element. Like, this story has everything. <laughs> it really does. Like, it really does. I appreciate that Mabel just needs a call out to get the internet back in running order. I think that's pretty funny. Like, excuse me, ma'am. Ma'am. Excuse me, ma'am. I'm going to need you to turn back on the Golden Bachelor. She just wants some attention. She, she does. Just, she just needs acknowledgement, and that's really sweet, honestly. Like, it she is. just messes with you however her energy can to get your attention. Yes. That's awesome. Also want to say, I love your musical taste. That is all. Thank you. Remember in the Audrey Hepburn, My Fair Lady, where she's like, ow! <laughs> she just has such a horrible, like, cockney accent. Yeah. Wow. Lynn, that was great. Thank you so much. And please keep them coming. And I appreciate your commitment to the bit. You literally went digging through these archives to figure out what was going on with the house. I love that. Yeah, I, I meant to acknowledge that part as well. She went through the microfilm, it sounds like, down at the library. <laughs> she sure she, did. Isn't that what we all want to do? Like, that's just like a secret thing that we all want to just go to the library and like comb through the microfilm and solve a fucking caper. It's giving seven or like one of those movies where they have to sit down and peel through all the evidence in like quick succession. I've seen it a billion times. It's such a trope. I can't think of it. Yeah, that. it's it's a big trope in like Buffy and shows like that too. Oh, yeah. Where they would go get the tea. Did I ever tell you that Emily, my sister, sorry, Emily, I'm outing you right now, uh, used to and maybe still does have a, a huge crush on, um, what's his name? Angel. I did not like Angel ever, like in the whole show, but I loved Spike and I just like wanted Buffy to somehow have like an enemies to lovers thing with Spike because one thing about me, I love a bad boy, unfortunate. It just is what it is. And Angel also just, like, gave nothing. You know what I mean? Like, he really gave nothing. Yeah. He just, like, loved her but just fucked off most of the time and just wasn't around, you know? So he it's really like, did. okay, what do, I, what do I do with that? Yeah. Not to yuck your yum, Emily, but Spike is the one who brought the tension. Spike has everything, honestly. <laughs> and spoiler alert – they do have a little something something towards the end of the series. So mm -hmm. if you haven't seen Buffy, just like watch it just for that because it is it's worth watching like five seasons worth of Buffy just to get to that like very satisfying interaction. Now I'm probably going to have to start rewatching Buffy this eve. So I think thanks you for should. that, Emily. Even though you had nothing to do with this, you were just brought into it. But yeah, thanks. Thanks again so much, Lynn, for sending us the requested tea about Mabel. And yeah, if you do want to do the spirit box thing, I wouldn't be mad about it. Yes, let us know. And also, if you have any more ghost tea, send it. Anyways, Amanda, do you have a shook story? I do. And this shook story comes from our friend Cassandra. And I love you, Cassandra. Thank you for sending this story in. Cassandra says, okay. So this had me shook. Hey ghouls, my name's Cassandra, but y'all know me more by my Instagram handle, Living Dead Barbie. And the E's for the record are the number three. She says, I've been meaning to tell y'all about my experiences, so prepare to be shook. Ha ha ha. So before I get into it, I just wanted to say that I absolutely adore you guys. 
I always look forward to new episodes from y'all. Anywho, let's get to it. Thank you, Cassandra. You're so sweet. Thank you. Seriously, you're so sweet. We we are living for this. These words of affirmation. Living dead Barb. I'm bringing Hollywood Ken to also enjoy this story by Living Dead Barbie. We love this. So to start off, might as well get it out there. I'm technically a witch. Fun fact. I actually had descendants that were living in Salem during the witch trials. That is so cool. We're Sorry. Shook. What in the world? That is insane. Okay. I've even had dreams when I was younger that would correlate into reality. And I can also pick up on someone's energy. I'm also very intuitive as well. I actually remember this one time when I was working at Kohl's. I was interacting with one of my coworkers at the time. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere... I started getting images of buffalo plaid, that red and black plaid, I think. I asked her if it meant anything to her, and she said yes. Her late grandfather happened to wear buffalo plaid. Crazy, I know. Now that that's out there, on to my experiences. So, unfortunately, I lost my grandfather back in 2018. Around that time, I took the liberty of moving into my grandmother's house. I didn't want her to be alone. I lived with her for well over three years. Anyway, a couple of months after my grandfather's passing, me, my mom, and my grandma went on a three generations trip to Walt Disney World. Cassandra, don't make me cry, okay? That is just really sweet. Okay, so before I go any further into this story, I should add that I had gotten a monarch butterfly tattoo back in 2016. I told myself that it would one day mean something more. Now, getting back to the story, only my grandma and I noticed this. Anywhere that we would go throughout the park, there was always a monarch butterfly present. We believed that it was my grandfather checking up on us and making sure that we were okay. A few months after the trip, my grandmother was going out of town, so I was going to have the house to myself. Around this time, one of my best friends got into a heated argument with her dad. She asked my grandma, if it was all right to spend the week with me, and my grandma, being the sweet old lady that she was, she said yes. So mind you, my grandfather actually passed away in my grandmother's house. I guess when he was in hospice, they brought in a hospital bed to my grandmother's house for him. He ended up passing later on on that exact hospital bed in my grandmother's place. So moving on, while my best friend was over, we heard this really weird electronical noise come from upstairs. We tried figuring out what it was, but we came down to the conclusion that it was my grandfather screwing around with us. When he was alive, he used to screw around with the family jokingly. I do also remember that around this time that I saw some weird shadow in my grandmother's room peeking out from the corner of the door going into her bathroom. I'm not sure if it was my grandfather or if it was something else. I do know that I've had a few other experiences, but none of them are coming to my mind. I'll obviously share them with y'all when they come back to me. Until next time, stay shook, ghouls. Cassandra. One thing about me, I'm very close to my grandparents. Um, My dad's parents, I lived with them in college, and they are 90 and 91. And Lord willing, as my nanny says, they'll make it to 100. I hope and pray. We've had some close calls with them, and every single time it's, it's so scary and I do think that in your case with your grandparents, I think that they're definitely watching over you. And if your grandfather was a trickster, he's probably going to stay tricking. He's he's probably going to stay messing around, causing a ruckus just for fun. Because if they like to do it in their worldly life, I could see why they'd want to keep that going in in the afterlife. And the monarch... I think it's so sweet that you guys went on a family vacay. That almost made me cry. Like three generations of people going to Disney World. And then the monarch butterfly. Oh my goodness. That's a sign. The fact that Cassandra said this is going to mean something to me one day. And then it did. In the most heartwarming way. The synchronicities yeah. are sinking. They're sinking. Oh man. That was beautiful. Thank you, Cassandra. We love you. And we appreciate you. We appreciate all of you sending in your stories but yeah if anybody has a story i specifically right now i want to hear everyone's glitch stories and i want to hear alien stories i want to hear any and all spooky stuff you got and santa agrees send it 
Yeah. Well, guess who just came to see me in the stew? Oh, my goodness. Pepper. My baby. He wants something. On that note, I guess that's our show. We'll see you next time. Stay shook. Stay shook. Thank you so much for tuning in to Shook. New episodes of Shook drop every other Wednesday on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Soon to be wherever you find your podcasts. Check out our show notes for more information on this week's episode, our social links, and more. Until next time, stay shook. Hey, do you have a personal paranormal encounter that you'd like to share with us? Visit our website, shookpodcast.com, to fill out our contact form. Or you can send us an email at shookparanormalpod at gmail.com.